Welcome to week eight of the NAI Football Weekly Update. I'm your host, Alan Grossbach, alongside Chad Waller, coming to you from the NAI headquarters in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. Things are starting to really heat up as we only have four regular season Saturdays remaining with 11 of the 12 conference races within one game of each other. The lone conference with a larger margin is still at only a game and a half. Things will definitely start to shake out over the next couple weeks as a lot of these teams still have to play each other. In last week's NAI Football Game of the Week, number 12 Tabor handed number 15 Kansas Wesleyan its first loss of the season, 14-7. The Blue Jays finished tonight with 392 yards total offense, including, including 245 yards on the ground. As expected, running back Joseph Donald played a key role, running for more than 120 yards on 27 carries. Quarterback Simon McKee also had a strong performance, with 147 yards passing and a touchdown, while also rushing for 53 yards, which was the second highest total in the game for Tabor. Now Kansas Wesleyan was led by quarterback Jake Curran, who threw for just over 200 yards and the Coyotes lone touchdown. Kansas Wesleyan opened the scoring late in the first quarter when Curran connected with Albert Geeson on a 28-yard touchdown strike. However, Tabor tied the game right before the half on a two-yard pass before scoring the eventual game winner on its opening possession of the second half. Tabor's defense was dominant on third down, al allowing only two first downs on 12 chances. With the win, Tabor claims sole possession of first place in the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference with four games remaining on its schedule. Kansas Wesleyan is now tied with Ottawa for second place in the league at 4-1. For the fourth straight week, Lindsey Wilson locked down the number one ranking in the NAI Football Coaches Top 25 poll. No movement occurred in the top 10 this week, marking the first time this season we haven't seen a change within this group. Teams jumped all around throughout the rest of the top 25, including pole high five spot jumps by number 15 Northwestern, number 18 Benedictine, and number 17 Montana Western. Carroll, they fell the far farthest, dropping seven places from 11 to 18 after losing its second straight game over the weekend. Four new teams, number 22 Campbellsville, number 23 Concordia, Nebraska, number 24 Cumberland's Kentucky, and number 25 Southeastern joined the poll, which is the most since five newcomers made an appearance in the first regular season edition. We started to look back at last week with arguably one of the biggest rivalries, rivalries in NAI football, and that was number two, Southern Oregon, downing number 11, Carroll, 28-27 in an overtime thriller. The game ended when quarterback Mac Roach's pass to Chase Fossum in the end zone on a two-point conversion was batted away by Southern Oregon defensive back Carrington Jones. The Raiders had four individuals attempt at least one pass in the game, led by Tanner Tronson, who threw for um, 235 yards. Tailback Sean Toe was also important for Southern Oregon, carrying the ball 14 times for 60 yards and two touchdowns, including what proved to be the game winner in overtime. With the win, Southern Oregon improves to 5-1 in the Frontier Conference and remains in a first place tie with Montana Tech. At 3-3, three three, Carroll is off to its worst start since 1999. The Saints entered the year with 14 titles in the last 15 years, conference titles that is, and they have a long road ahead if they want to make it 15 of 16. In the surprise of the weekend, unranked Dakota State, who's under 500, down number 25 Dickinson State, 54 to 21. The win for the Trojans not only halted the Blue Hawks' five game winning streak, but it's a program's first victory over a nationally ranked team in more than a decade. Now, Dakota State, they racked up 452 yards of total offense, including a season-high 210 yards rushing by tailback Robert Johnson. He also scored a touchdown in the contest. The Trojans' defense forced five Dickinson State turnovers, including three interceptions. Linebacker Ben Kulos tall tallied a game-high 20 tackles, including three tackles for loss. He also had one of the three interceptions en route to National Defensive Player of the Week honors. Despite the loss, Dickinson State maintains its first place position in the North Star Athletic Association. The Blue Hawks lead second place Mayville State by one half game. A couple other notable scores over the weekend were number one Lindsey Wilson beating number 18 Faulkner 24-19, number three Morningside knocking off number 17 Dakota Wesleyan 76-20, and lastly, number, number 14, St. Xavier, down number 25, St. Ambrose, 27 to 10. A top 10 matchup in the Mid-South Conference was chosen as this week's NEI Football Game of the Week as our previously mentioned top-ranked Lindsey Wilson travels to number 8, Reinhardt. Kickoff is slated for 12 p.m. Eastern Time in Georgia. Like we mentioned earlier, Lindsey Wilson has locked down the number one ranking for four consecutive weeks. Prior to this season, the Blue Raiders have never been ranked higher than number six. 
The Lindsey Wilson offense is led by quarterback Dylan Beasley. The first year starter is completing nearly 60% of his passes for more than 1,300 yards and 12 touchdowns. He has gone for more than 250 yards passing three times this year, including a 306 yard effort against Cumberland's Kentucky two weeks ago. The Blue Raiders have spread the wealth this season as 16 different receivers have at least one catch. Parmetric Ross is the team leader in receiving yards with 266 yards on 11 catches, including four touchdowns. Defensively, Lindsey Wilson is holding opponents to only 15.2 points per game, which is seventh in the NEI. Linebacker Michael Brooks keys the defense. He leads the team with 47 tackles, including six tackles for loss. Now, Reinhardt is also enjoying its best season in program history. The Eagles' number eight ranking is the highest in program history and the first ever top 10 mark for the club. Reinhardt features the, arguably the best rushing attack in the NEI as it leads the nation in total rushing with nearly 2,600 yards and rushing offense per game with a better than 350 yards per game average. Running backs Nigel Curtis and LJ Stagall are the workhorses of the offense. Curtis leads the team with 96 carries, 568 yards and 12 touchdowns, followed by Stagall with 62 carries for 504 yards and four scores. Quarterback Ryan Thompson is efficient. He has completed nearly 67% of his throws for 1,095 yards and eight touchdowns. Most importantly, he rarely turns the ball over with only two interceptions on the year. On defense, the Eagles are allowing 19.4 points and over 373 yards per game. Defensive lineman Javier Dyer is having a strong season with nine and a half tackles for loss, including a team best five and a half sacks. Jacob Gross is a team leader in tackles with 58. Saturday is a key game as both teams are jockeying for the Mid-South Conference West Division title and more importantly, a spot in the FCS. A win or loss Saturday could be the difference between hosting or traveling in the playoffs. Like we've talked about all season, we picked the National Game of the Week using a social media fan vote. Graphics are posted on Facebook and Instagram no later than 6 p.m. Central Time on Mondays, and that poll remains open until 10 a.m. on Tuesdays, so I ask you to get out there and vote when we post those polls. And lastly, I'd like to remind everyone about our weekly Periscope Q&A session. Please submit your questions to me through our NAI underscore news Twitter account or live during the broadcast. Well, Chad, that puts a wrap on this week's episode. I'm Alan Grossbach. And I'm Chad Waller. We'll see you next week. <laughs>